It's a beautiful Tuesday morning at the farm. It's about 10 o'clock. We had some appointments this morning, but uh, school is closed for my daughter, so she's with me, and um, I'm gonna spend the day out here. She gets to hang out with Grandma and Grandpa, and I get to run the evaporator for an untold number of hours. So, first thing we need to do is split some more wood up and uh, get this thing fired up. And then we're just gonna enjoy the day and make syrup all day. Huh. Not really, not really we're not really sure what this thing's for. Uh, some piece of equipment, clearly. But I know what that's for. See if I can fish out a big one here. Oh yeah. That'll keep me going for a little while. To be fair, that log splitter does work fine. It just needs a carb cleaning and a, the battery's probably dead because it's been sitting all winter. My dad actually built that. It's really nice. Um, but you know, there's something fun about splitting by hand too. Sometimes you just gotta do that. I should say too that the best wood for running the evaporator is split, split pretty small. You might have noticed I was splitting stuff up when it didn't look like I needed to. If you're splitting wood for a fireplace, you can do pretty big chunks, but uh, with the evaporator, you want them small. At least Smoky Lake Maple's website, the folks that I bought the evaporator through, said no bigger than your wrist. So that's kind of what I'm going by. I've got kind of chicken skinny wrists, so I'm splitting mine pretty small, <laughs> but um, it seems to burn hotter. And uh, I got into some good oak here, some logs that dad had cut down a few years ago. So uh, they were really, really burning hot. So I got enough wood to get started. Let's uh, get that thing fired up. Now, I'm a lot of things, but I am by no means an expert woodsman. I've fixed up some axes and I've rehung handles on things and I've tuned a few things up. I've sharpened a few saws in my day. But if you really want to see someone who knows his stuff, check out a uh, Buckin' Billy Ray Smith. I just discovered that guy's YouTube channel a little while ago and I can't stop watching it. He's really something and as a Minnesotan, which is basically Canada South, uh, <laughs> I get a kick out of him. So if you want to see a guy who can see a guy who can split some wood and knows his way around in the woods, that's a guy right there. He's lived it. All right, we'll get this thing fired up here. I've got some bark, some old scraps of some cedar siding that are pretty dry. First couple of times I fired it up, I used newspaper, but uh, quickly realized it's quite a bit easier to just use a torch. Firing this thing has been kind of a learning curve as to, you know, 
which uh, settings to keep the damper at and how to stack the wood in there best. Because really what you're looking for is the hardest boil and the best efficiency that you can possibly muster. And uh, I've kind of got things figured out a little bit now. When you stack the wood in here, you crisscross it and make air cavities and let the air flow through everything really good. Got my janky torch here where the igniter doesn't work. There we go. Okay, if the draft takes off, that'll get that going. It's crackling. It's a good sign. The draft slide is down here, controls the airflow in, into the evaporator. Right now I've got it wide open, but once it's running, we close it off a bit and it helps concentrate the heat under the pan. Yeah, I think we're going. Okay. Things are starting to have the amber color of syrup. I've actually pulled off about two gallons worth of syrup that was not quite finished, but almost. And uh, I was out here last night till about one in the morning. Here's the tote with the sap in it. It was about up here. So I think I boiled maybe 30 gallons last night. 30, 35, something like that. Um, it's, it gets kind of pointless to keep track after a while. It's just a lot. <laughs> so there's a, a little over, what am I looking at here? It looks like we're at about 100, 100 gallons here. Yeah, the gauge on the tote says it's 100 gallons that's in there, or right about 110 maybe. So we're going to try to get through all of this today if we can. And if we have another sap collecting day like yesterday, which is kind of what it's looking like, um, there's going to be a lot to bring in from the woods. It's mid-afternoon, I figured I'd check back in here. Uh, we've been boiling for a good chunk of the day, since probably 11 this morning, and uh, rolling right along. I'll show you what we've got. We're down to about 75 gallons in the tote, maybe a little less at this point, because it's sitting at a little bit of an angle. And the pan is just really rolling away here. I've drawn off a little bit of syrup that was close to finished. There's our drip feed coming in. <clears throat> and if we go around the pan here, I'll try to stay out of the steam, but you can see this side, see those bubbles are so thick and they're small bubbles. The thermometer is saying we're about five degrees over boiling, but I'm thinking about drawing some off anyway, just because I'd rather not worry about it cooking over and I can finish this off on the stove. There's some of the almost syrup that we've got in the kettle. So that's where we're at. Well, it's rainy and warm today, and uh, we couldn't get any frost seeding done this morning because it didn't get cold enough overnight. So I decided to fire the evaporator up. You can see the three different colors as the pan creates a gradient. Keep adding fresh sap back there. And as it flows down and through each channel, the sugar gets more concentrated. And by over here, it's starting to look like syrup. Here we go, first draw off. Got sap over here running in to try to make up for what we're taking out. 
try to keep everything balanced. And we're watching the temperature gauge to see when it drops back down into like two degrees above boiling. And then that'll all, everything going in that kettle, I'll finish off at home. Quick syrup update. It's March 16th and every bag is like this. I'm probably gonna end up hauling like 80 gallons of sap out of the woods today, all in buckets on foot. It's killing me. <laughs> the tote's getting full, I'll show you in a minute. There it is. That was about 120 gallons of sap in there that I've collected over the last five days or so. Um, only today had the 75 gallon run. It was a little less than it looked like in the woods when I finally got it all collected. I've probably run about 10 or 15 gallons out of there so far tonight, so it has gone down some. And of course, naturally now I gotta try to get ahead of all this because the weather's looking good for sap and if the trees are gonna run that hard, um, even if I cook away at it here, I'm gonna probably collect that much or, I don't know, I can't really tell what to anticipate for tomorrow. It might be that much again. Um, I keep glancing up because the tote's in front of me now and I'm <laughs> staring at it speculatively and trying to decide just how hard I have to go at this tonight. I've got the evaporator going and uh, doing pretty good, averaging right around 10 gallons an hour. So uh, we've made pretty good time tonight and we're continuing to make pretty good time. I think I'm probably gonna cook all day tomorrow. Anyway, there we go. We're working here tonight uh, till late and uh, trying to make a dent in that, that batch of sap that we've got. Now, I wouldn't be doing my due diligence if I didn't take you all through to the finished process of um, actually finishing the boil on this syrup, turning it into finished maple syrup, and uh, I just put it in mason jars. Uh, so that's what I'm doing today. It's a nasty day outside. It's rainy. We can't really do a lot at the farm except go and collect sap later. Uh, so I'm taking the opportunity to finish off some of the sap that I had in that big stainless steel kettle. Um, so let me walk you through those steps of the last couple of things I do and putting it in the jars and uh, moving on to the next batch. Couple of tools of the trade we've got. Um, a smaller kettle. I've got the syrup or the almost finished syrup that I drew off in that big kettle. Um, normally I would have that warmed up, but today I didn't bother to pre-warm it just because there wasn't very much left. I did a bunch already last night. Um, a smaller kettle to cook it in. I've got a thermometer. This is a brewing thermometer for, for beer making. It came in a kit that I got, but any good candy thermometer will do. Um, highly recommend a, a syrup hydrometer, which helps measure the density, sugar content, of um, the finished syrup lets you know when you're really there and a hydrometer cup which uh, you put the syrup in and you float the hydrometer in the cup. Uh, the first couple of years that I made syrup I didn't have a hydrometer I was always guessing when it was done one year it was too watery another year it was too thick and crystallized in the jars and after that I said I gotta go and get one so <laughs> usually that's the way I work I try to get by with the minimal stuff that I can until I realize I really need something and uh, it's, it's not the worst system in the world. Um, so this right here is almost done. We're really close. Um, you can check it with a thermometer. <laughs> if I could turn the thermometer the right direction. Basically, you should have something close to finished syrup when you are 7 degrees over the boiling point of water. And that, of course, is relative to whatever elevation you're at. We are uh, fairly close to sea level in Minnesota. And so, we're pretty much spot on usually. Um, I'm looking at 219 degrees to let me know that my syrup is about done. However, a thermometer is not the only thing you should rely on because it can be inaccurate. The hydrometer is by far the most accurate way to check it. Um, and there are some advanced instruments other than the hydrometer that you can use, but probably only if you're um, a relatively serious maple syrup maker. So, we are not. <laughs> As I've said before, this is just a hobby. Just a big, time-intensive, uh, <laughs> resource-intensive hobby. However, um, it, this works for me. This is a good setup, basic tools, enough to get the job done accurately. And if any of you are thinking of doing it as a hobby, that's kind of what I would recommend as a basic setup for you, too. All right, so on the hydrometer stem, you see the two red lines there. 
and that is your indication of when you're in the right zone to be considered syrup. At 211 degrees, that top line is 32 baum, and that lets you know that your uh, sugar concentration is correct. And then as the temperature goes down, according to the chart I've got over here at, say for example, 193 degrees, you would be at 32.5, because the hydrometer will float higher, and the density of the syrup will get more dense as it cools. So you can follow the compensations, but the fact is I just look at that top line and if I ladle that syrup out at boiling from the kettle and drop the hydrometer in and I'm <clears throat> floating with that top red line showing, I know that I'm in, I'm in the right zone and I'm in the place where I want to be. Now we're at a, about at the right point to check with the hydrometer. I've got the sap, the syrup, I'm assuming the terms kind of get interchangeable, so sorry about that. Um, we've got what I'm going to call the syrup close to being done here and at a boil. So it's good and hot. Um, the hydrometer reading is temperature dependent, but I've kind of learned you can get right in the ballpark as long as the uh, syrup is boiling when you're testing it, when you're scooping it out here, spooning it out to test it, ladling it out, I suppose. And uh, if the hydrometer says that it's in the syrup range at that point, then you're, you're pretty safe. Um, so I fill the hydrometer cup almost full, but we need to leave room for the hydrometer itself. And then just gently drop that in so that it doesn't smack on the bottom of the cup because it is glass. And that floats, but there's a defining line on there. And the higher the hydrometer floats, the more dense the syrup is. And when it's reached the right density, it's at 66% sugar, which means that it's finished. Um, this is just a little bit under yet. The hydrometer's floating a little too low. Uh, <clears throat> so we're going to keep boiling. And uh, as you get closer and closer to being finished syrup, the boil gets more sensitive. So we have to keep reducing the heat and keep the boil gentle because it will foam over. And uh, it's a just a unruly mess if that happens. Um, I had that happen to me last year. I lost half of a kettle, which is an untold number of hours of work, and that's a, that's a lesson in frustration right there. So, we're not quite ready yet. We'll dump this syrup back into the kettle. And then it's important to rinse off the hydrometer so that it doesn't have a coating of dried syrup on it that might weigh it down for the next reading. Um, it's got to be clean each time you use it. A lot of people who make syrup filter it. Uh, if I was going to be selling it, I would be adding a filtration process to this whole scenario. Uh, but because we're just making it for us and our immediate family members and a few people I give it away to, I don't bother to filter it. It does have some precipitate, some sediment in it. That's uh, minerals that settle out from the boiling process. Um, they call it sugar sand. It will just settle to the bottom of each jar. And then I, I just tell everyone as they're using it, don't use the last little bit. Pour it carefully and uh, wash out the last little bit. It's not harmful. It's got kind of a bad mouthfeel. It doesn't have the best flavor necessarily at that very bottom of the jar. And that's okay. There's nothing, nothing about it that's going to hurt anyone. It's just a little unsightly. I've been present for the filtration process with other people, and I've tried to filter it myself with old t-shirts and things, and um, it, it plugs up so fast, and I just don't like doing that portion of it, so... <laughs> that's a really uh, wussy excuse, but um, it just seems like if we don't need to for our own personal use, then we're not going to. We're totally fine with it the way it's been so far. All right, I just took a hydrometer reading. It showed we were in the right zone, so uh, uh, this is done. Um, now, basically, I just have, I have my hot jar. It's a lot like canning anything else. I've got lids and rings that I have uh, uh, boiled in uh, water with a little bit of vinegar to take the mineral and cut it. And um, so those are sterilized. These are sterilized. I just heated these up in the microwave. Um, with syrup, you don't need to be quite as concerned with optimal sterility. Um, but... Uh, it's, uh, it's good enough to go and, and bottle this up, so I'm just going to ladle the uh, syrup into the jars. I'm going to leave very little headspace. We don't want a lot of airspace in there. 
and uh, put the lids on and set them off to the side to, uh, to uh, seal up. There's what I've got so far. I couldn't film filling the jars because I didn't have four hands. But these four over here I filled yesterday. And then these uh, two pints and two quarts I just did now. So you can see this is a pretty light colored syrup and that's typical of the early sap run. Um, so it'll get darker as the season goes on, but that's what we've done so far. We're off to a good start. I am checking in with a syrup update. I'm out here in the woods, and as you can probably see, it looks a heck of a lot different than it did when I started. No snow left, or very little. I can find... there's a patch. <laughs> but not much. Well, what I wanted to talk about with this video, quick, is that uh, syrup season's coming to an end for me. I know there are parts in northern Minnesota that are just getting started, but um, right now where we're at, it's kind of a rainy day. I'm not getting a very good sap run. I had a couple of good ones, but um, there are, I'm starting to see some signs that we're about finished. And those signs entail the following. There's a lot more insects out. I've been getting a lot of ants uh, and bugs in my sap bags, which is no fun to mess with. Then you have to kind of filter it through a t-shirt or something to just to even to get the sap into the tote and make sure you don't pour a bunch of bugs in there with it. Um, the next two nights are going to be below freezing, but just barely. It's going to get down to 30. And then after that, I don't see a night in the forecast where it gets below freezing. So that means the sap run is probably going to taper off because you really need that fluctuation to below freezing at night and 40 degrees or a little over 40 degrees during the day. And it just doesn't look like that's going to be the case. We're going to be in the 50s uh, during the day and above freezing at night. And as I glance up at the twigs that I can see uh, silhouetted against the sky here, I'm starting to see little bits of buds forming on the uh, hard maples. Hard maples are some of the later trees to set buds. And when they start to bud out, your sap run is kind of done. Um, I know some guys will push it, try to go a little longer, but the sugar content in the sap starts to go down markedly at that point. And with out the temperature fluctuations you don't get the good sap runs anyway so this might be my last day collecting sap uh i well i shouldn't say that i'll probably try tomorrow yet as well uh just because we're gonna have a cold night overnight and i think tomorrow i'm gonna spend the whole day at the farm boiling and it'll be probably my last big boil uh and then we it's time to move on to other things anyway as <laughs> i always get so revved up about the syrup season and it is really fun, and I do like doing it, but by the end it starts to feel like a slog where you're just sick of splitting wood and sick of tending the evaporator, and you start thinking about uh, grain drills and corn planters and things that need to be fixed up, and the weather is nicer outside. And uh, So there's always other tasks. There's a whole bunch of brush I need to cut on the farm and fences I need to put up if we're actually going to get those goats this spring. So, you know... It's like all things agricultural, where it goes in cycles, and you get excited to start things, and when things are ready to be done, you're ready for them to be done. You're tired of them. So, <laughs> so that's where I'm at. We're uh, wrapping up here with the syrup season. Oh, ooh, I do see a really big bag of sap, though. Here, I'll show you that. So, like most of my trees, most of my trees just have a little bit in them. So, like this one. That's how most of my bags look today which is just going to get me the bare minimum for collecting. But, running. This, on the other hand, the big trees are still producing like that. But, you can, might be able to see here, if I get in close, there's a bunch of ants crawling on there. So I'm going to find some inside the bag. In fact, I can see it there on the surface in there. So, they're no fun to deal with. They're a pain. So, <laughs> at this point, the fact of the matter is, since I'm making this as a hobby and I'm not trying to maximize production to make a bunch of money at it, I've got enough syrup. I've, I've made over a gallon and a half, and I've got four gallons of almost finished syrup sitting on my back porch, and I've probably got at least four or five gallons of almost finished syrup in the evaporator pan right now waiting to be cooked some more. Um, I will <laughs> I'll never be able to use that much. We've done... We've done a heck of a job this year at uh, upping production, so it's, uh, it's time to call her. Time to call her good. 
Well, I definitely called it right because uh, this is going to be the last boil of the maple syrup season. It's just getting dark here. I'm just about wrapped up. Um, that, sh that last bit of sap that I collected, I've been running through the evaporator today. And I can definitely tell the sugar content is lower on it because I've done a lot of boiling and I uh, have not seen the density go up that much compared to earlier when the thermometer would rise fairly consistently. And I knew the density was increasing and I could draw off syrup every few hours. Um, today I've been boiling all day. I've had one draw off on the, uh, on the finished syrup or almost finished syrup. And so, um, yeah, I had kind of made the call already that I was going to finish up, uh, today and pull my taps tomorrow and clean my equipment up. It's supposed to rain all day on Saturday. So I'd like to have this, uh, arch and pan and, uh, the full evaporator set up, put away and stored, uh, before it rains hard. Cause then I would have to dry it out and, um, I just don't want to go through that mess. So tomorrow I'm going to clean up and take my nearly finished syrup home. And, uh, it can sit on the back porch in the cool temperatures for a couple of days until I can get it all finished on the kitchen stove and put into jars. So there we go. My favorite time of year. Well, I shouldn't say that. One of my favorite times of year, definitely my favorite spring thing to do. Um, is coming to a close and it's time for it to be done. I'm ready to be done with it. So <laughs> you know how I should end this off is uh, I should I should do a Yule log, use the evaporator to do a Yule log video.